Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today we're talking about digestive enzymes as a supplement. People can get digestive enzymes from their food, but they can also get them as pills. Now, when a person uses animal products and eats animal products, they, they tend to need less enzymes. The enzymes tend to be required when a person can't digest plant products, in my experience, clinically. It is true that some people will need proteases or lipases to digest protein and fat temporarily, but after they've been on an animal diet, they don't usually need that very much. Their bile usually kicks into, into order. It's the patients that are more plant-based than animal-based that have that, that problem, uh, in my experience. And, and when I say plant, in this case, I mean grain and bean, legume, and starchy root vegetables. So if a person is eating pasta, bread, flour, uh, any kind of flour, even nut flours, like almond flour is a really big one, they're going to need a lot more digestive enzymes, even for digesting protein and fat, because of the anti-nutrient effect and the lectin effect of the plants. So this is not to say that all plants are bad. It's just that if a person eats the wrong plants and has that problem or reaction to the plants, they're going to have trouble digesting the meat and fat from animal products, as well as oils from vegetable products. So they're going to need amylases and lipases. Now, amylases are enzymes that digest starch. The amylases begin in the mouth. So if you want to digest starches better, you want to chew your food very thoroughly because we don't really start protein digestion and fat digestion in the mouth. We start starch digestion in the mouth directly. So amylases are things that are present in, in our bodies. They're released in our saliva. So you want to chew thoroughly. You want to, you want to count your chews and make sure you chew at least 15 times or more before you swallow if you're not used to doing that. It's also useful to turn off electronic devices like TVs and screens. It's useful to have some kind, sometimes quiet conversations or, or no conversations. You know, I, I like to encourage families to be together and talk when they have uh, family time and, and when they eat meals together, but not too much. I mean, you shouldn't be lecturing or having a dissertation while you're eating because, you know, you've got a tube that goes two ways. You've got food going down and air coming in and out so it's really almost like three ways because you've got air coming in, air going out while you're breathing, and you've got the food being swallowed. So it's, it's not an unusual thing for people to have a choking hazard and to have maldigestion from talking too much while they're eating. They can also swallow air. Aerophagia is a problem where a person can swallow a lot of air and start to burp a lot. It happens in people that are anxious in families where they have to, have to squeeze in a comment because there's too many people talking. That was more true for larger families, but it's also true anytime there's a, a larger group of people or very talkative people where people are trying to jockey for position in a conversation. This happens in, in business lunches where people are working together. They do a working lunch and they're talking and they're animated and they're trying to get things done. And so they may swallow air as well as just not chew well enough as they try to eat. So the digestion of starch and carbohydrates begins in the mouth with amylase. In the stomach, you have protease, which begins in, in the stomach and in the, in the small intestine. Really, actually, stomach acid is the major beginner of, of protein digestion. Stomach acid starts in the stomach and it triggers the proteases and amylases that really activate after the stomach. Mostly the stomach is hydrochloric acid and that's, that's a, a really big deal for digesting protein. The fat really doesn't start to be digested well until the small intestine after the bile hits it. So when a person is trying to digest their protein, they're going to be doing that in the stomach with stomach acid. And that can often be started with the smells and aromas of, of cooked protein and the, the look of a, of a nice, beautiful plate. So as a chef, as a doctor, you want to be able to make sure that people have good-looking food, good-smelling food, and that, that really begins the digestive process. It starts the secretions, it starts the salivation, and luckily we, you know, we don't drool too much on our shoes, but we do drool sometimes and feel that sense that, boy, it's time to eat. So digestive enzymes that you might want to take would include amylases, lipases, and proteases. Just to review, lipases are for fat, they're enzymes, proteases are for protein, and amylases are for starch. The source of these can often be found from plant sources like papain and bromelain. Papain comes from papaya, and bromelain comes from the stems of pineapples. So these are enzymes that normally digest the stems so that when fruit ripens, it can fall off of the plant that it grew on. And so the stem can break and it can fall to the ground, and the seeds can be consumed by animals or deposited in the soil or carried off somehow in the bodies of animals and birds. That's, that's generally how seeds work. 
We want to get those proteases and amylases from, from those sources. You can get them in pill form, and usually people take them with every meal that is substantive. If it's a small snack, you might not take a digestive enzyme. And there has been an old, an old uh, idea of not drinking fluids while eating meals. And that's really okay. Um, if you eat raw food diets that are entirely raw, you can do that. But like any diet, you have to do it right. You can do any diet wrong and you can do any diet right. So if you did a raw diet, you probably aren't going to need a lot of, of water with the meal. If you eat a very, very dehydrated diet, you eat MREs with, in a military fashion, um, meals ready to eat that are dehydrated, you've got to add water. If you're eating cooked food, which most of the Chinese medicine regimens talk about how there should be a balance between cooked food and raw food. In fact, Chinese medicine and traditional Chinese medicine doesn't believe that a person should eat just raw food for very long. And if they do, it's not so healthy for their chi and their, and their, their um, meridians and all of that. I'm not an expert in that field, but I have some wonderful people who will be interviewed in the future so we can talk about that together. So they tell me that the, the concept is when you eat cooked food, you're certainly going to need more water. So people may need to drink water, but not necessarily at the meal. They may have to drink water that day, but not necessarily at the meal. Now, why is that? If you drink water or fluids during a meal, you're going to dilute your digestive juices. You're going to dilute the secretions, which are the hydrochloric acid, the bile, and the um, enzymes that your body will secrete to digest all your food from your liver and your pancreas and your stomach and your saliva and your salivary glands in your mouth. So it may not be the smartest thing to drink a ton of fluids while you're eating a meal or right before a meal, but it would be a great idea to take digestive enzymes right before you eat the meal, like about a half an hour before. You really only have to just dissolve the capsules, and that, that only takes about you know, 15 minutes to get it down the pipe and dissolved. Some enzymes and vitamins take longer, and of course, some vitamin pills really never get dissolved, and we find them in people's stool, in, in toilets and in plumbing and in porta potties. So re realize that some vitamin pills are too dense and they never get digested by some people. So if you have a digestive enzyme and, and you're saying, man, I already take so many pills, I take vitamins, I take minerals, I take herbs, and now you want me to take digestive enzyme pills too? Well, there is such a thing as too many pills because of the casing of the pill. So it may be necessary for capsules for you to take the capsules apart and, and throw the ingredients in a blender and make yourself a little drink of all your supplements in the morning or at night. I find that works for convenience for patients because some of them are taking an awful lot of capsules. If it's pills or tablets, same thing, just throw them in the blender and blend them up. They don't taste great, but if you blend them up and mix them with something else, often you can choke them down and it's a lot easier to get them down with a liquid that you can drink, like a, a green smoothie or some kind of drink or, or some kind of iced tea or herbal tea. That works very well, iced, iced herbal tea especially. So that way you can get the enzymes into your body. There are benefits of these enzymes. They often make the person have less belching, less bloating, less, less what we called SIBO. We talked about SIBO in previous discussions, which was small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and SIFO, which is small intestinal fungal overgrowth. And that's where your body starts to have problems, where organisms that live in the large intestine migrate up to the small intestine, and they, they go through that bridge between the small intestine and the large intestine where the appendix is. That ileocecal valve is supposed to stay closed. Now chiropractors and massage therapists often work on this valve and try to open it for you when it's, when it's closed and close it for you when it's open because it's supposed to stay closed most of the time and it's only supposed to open when your food is going, when your bolus of, of waste is going through and entering the large intestine. If that valve stays open, there can be migration of bacteria and fungi up into the small intestine and these rowdy bacteria and rowdy fungi that live in the large intestine normally uh, and are supposed to be there end up in a place they're not supposed to be and they wreak havoc. And you end up with uh, some really bad symptoms like bloating and gas and belching and burping and farting and all of that stuff. So flatulence. So you'll see that the digestive enzymes often will help with that. But once a person gets balanced and they're not eating the food lectins and the anti-nutrients that they don't need, they've reduced the grains and the carbohydrate ratios, they, they do a lot better. Many times it's, it's, a, it's a carbohydrate ratio of protein, fat to carbs. And so we'll end on just talking about the 40-30-30 diet, which is where you go if you're a beginner. If you eat garbage, if you eat trash, if you eat a standard American diet, which is the SAD diet, and you're wondering, what do I do? Where do I start? And you're taking medications and you're just really not feeling very balanced at all. You would follow the advice of Barry Sears, the guy who invented the Zone diet um, many years ago. 
And that was an entry-level diet that was very useful for people that were really sick and diabetic and had all kinds of problems. And uh, it, was a, it was the way to enter into a healthy diet. 40, 30, 30. So 40% carbs, 30 fat, 30 protein. And that was his way of getting people to nudge them toward being healthy. And he did it by giving them fast food. He said, you know, you could take fast food and just modify the ratios of which foods you choose on the menu at, a, at fast food places, and you could control type 2 diabetes. And, and in fact, lo and behold, that's what the guy proved. So it's a great place to start. If you're already pretty healthy, the 40-30-30 diet is not the greatest place for you to go. You can do much better than that, and you can do all kinds of better diets, like, the, like a keto diet. You could do a raw foods diet. You could do a, a carnivore diet. And all that depends on you and your doctor figuring out what is the best diet for you. But that's the idea of enzymes. You shouldn't eat them forever, but they're a great way to nudge you and get you better, and they help with all kinds of conditions.